Hello, welcome everybody to our year anniversary of the desktop team in DABA. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's so exciting and we have a really special one planned for everybody today. We have Mark here to answer some amazing questions and we have a, a wonderful um, class of middle schoolers in Minnesota here to join us and ask Mark some questions themselves too. Um, very exciting. I want to th say thanks to everybody that submitted questions online. Um, I look forward to um, asking them with Monica together. We're going to tag team this. There's a lot of stuff to cover. So um, this should be fun. Welcome, Mark. It Thank should you be. For being here. Um, yeah. So should we kick off with some questions? I think so. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, I think you guys have the questions, right? You want to okay. Send uh, uh, Club President Cam, we'll start with you. Okay, your question for Mark. <laughs> How old were you and what inspired you to create Ubuntu? Wow, so Ubuntu was started in 2004. And so then I would have been 31 years old. And um, I was inspired because it, it has always seemed to me amazing that people um, come together to make open source software. I think it's such a great combination of science and art and generosity and business and all sorts of great things that come together in, in open source software. Um, and I wanted to, to do something that open source software had made a huge difference in my life. It allowed me to explore all kinds of crazy, interesting things. Um, and so I wanted to do something that would have a positive impact in open source software and a positive impact in the world. And so after sort of talking to a bunch of people and thinking about it, I, I decided to form Ubuntu. And I was lucky enough to meet a, a great big crowd of sort of really special people who were deep into Linux. And I didn't know enough about Linux to really do anything useful, um, but I could, I could actually help them get things going. And that's how Ubuntu got started. Very cool, very cool. Okay, uh, Savannah, do you wanna go next? All right, come on up. What kind of sport? What kind of support did you have and how long did it take you to make the first release? Um, well, the first release was very exciting. We, um, we, we all got together in April uh, in that year and this was the first time we all met as a group. And um, we decided that we wanted to put out a release in six months. Um, and so we gave ourselves just six months to go from zero to the first release of, of Ubuntu. Um, it was a very intense time. Um, and uh, we, that, we, we, we knew that it was going to be a little crazy, so we codenamed that release the Warty Warthog. Um, but it all worked. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so that, that's, that's why the Warty Warthog, we decided it was, going to be, it was going to be a bit rough, but we would call it the Warty Warthog. Anyway, so the Warthog is now our kind of team, team mascot, and uh, it turned out not to be that Warty after all. Everything's been great since then. Okay, Rania, please. Okay. Do I get to ask some questions? I'm, I'm of course. Really Ooh, <laughs> we should definitely Hello, have that. Hello, Mr. Um, important sir. Um, who taught you about Linux and open source before Ubuntu? And what kind of Linux did you like the most and why? Um, oh, that's such a great question. So I was at university in Cape Town. And uh, in those days, you know, I thought of computers as, as you know, just running Windows because that was the only thing that, that, that I'd ever seen and that most people used. Um, and so I was at university and one day, um, one of the kids in my class gave me a, a set of disks and said, you should try this. Um, and so I figured out quite quickly that uh, it was Linux. Um, and I, I snuck into the computer lab after hours <laughs> and I stayed in the computer lab all night, basically first getting Linux onto one of the machines in the computer lab and then realizing that I would get caught if, if, if it was still Linux in the morning. So I then had to figure out how to get Windows onto the same machine before everybody else showed up, which took me all night. I wasn't very good at it. Um, <laughs> so, so that's where I kind of first encountered Linux. I was, trying to, I was trying to work with the internet. The internet was sort of very early. It was very new. It had just arrived in South Africa. Um, and Windows couldn't really work with the internet in those days. So I was just really interested in Linux because it would give me access to the internet, make it easy for me to try to build things for the internet. 
Um, and really, that's been true ever since. Like Linux makes it easier for you to build interesting things. Right? Very cool. And we have one more. Julia, come on up. How hard is it to make a software, and are you still working to make open software programs? Um, that's really interesting. Um, I think when you say how hard is something, um, I think you, you, you can absolutely write software. I promise you all of you can write software, and you should have the confidence to dive in and, and enjoy writing software, right? There's thousands of different kinds of software that you can write. I think the more important thing is is what 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 do you want to create in the world, right? If you if you want to um, um, help people, you know, with this kind of thing in their life, then you're going to end up writing this kind of software. If you're going to if you want to help people with that kind of thing in their life, then then you're going to end up writing that kind of software. So the question really isn't, you know, uh, uh, can you write software? But the question is like, what software do you want to write, and what do you need to learn to get there? For me, I'm, I'm very interested in, in enabling other people to write software. And so, you know, Ubuntu is a platform for people's creativity. They do all sorts of crazy different things. Some people right now, they're really interested in uh, what we call the Internet of Things. I don't know, have you guys played with any little devices? Have you played with like Raspberry Pis or? Jake has, Jake has. Yeah. So you know about the Internet of Things, right? You know that you can you can have some idea. You can look around a room or a building or a, or a factory or a, or a sports field, and you can say, well, I can do something interesting here. And you just take a little piece of hardware that's not very expensive, and you take Linux, and then you write a little piece of software that may not be that complicated, and you do something really interesting. And for me, that's really wonderful, right? I think the IoT is can open up a huge wave of creativity for entrepreneurs, for startups, for people just trying to make the world a better place. So we're doing a lot of work to try and make it easier for people to create internet things, right? And to do that in a way where those things will be secure and safe, and you can plug them in at home and not worry about them. They're not going to be they're not going to be kind of botnets mining crypto um, on your uh, on your home electricity supply. Um, that's the one end of the spectrum. And then the other end of the spectrum, um, we're really interested in like big software where you've got thousands of pieces of software across hundreds of machines. And you're trying to do like solve really really big problems, um, and to do that in very kind of agile ways to make that really easy. So that's what I find fun, right? There are all of these different kinds of software, and what can we do in Ubuntu that makes it easier for people to to live with all of those different kinds of software, and uh, and and make the most of it. All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, that was uh, for our questions, but you mentioned that you might have a question or two. Tell me about the Penguin Core. How did you guys get founded? What do you do? All right. We started in 2019. And I think we have, just from that first year, raise your hand if you're a first-year student. I should have at least a couple. All right. Um, so from, from that first year back there, we have like uh, Cam and Sophie. Cam was one of our founders, and then Sophie came in during uh, the second season there that same year. So they're kind of our, you know, ground level. We, we started off in the after school here and I had run a Linux club at my previous school. And I suggested to our, our principal when I got hired, I said, we had some success with this at my last school. I think this could be a benefit. And she said, oh, that sounds great. Um, we have an after school program. We could put it there. But we really didn't have an idea of just how things were going to happen or how fast or how big things were going to get. We started off with 14 kids. Next season, it was 18. We got shut down for COVID. And when we got shut down, we actually got up to over 20 because there were some kids that could join from home at that point. And we have kids learning to install, configure, and use Linux and open source software. We have kids recycling computers that are then used by other students. Some of those are used in kids' homes, and that became a big part of things with distance learning because of COVID-19. We provided all of the computers that our school used for distance learning, and at one point that was over 350 machines out in kids' homes. Uh, and all of that, that gear was either donated or it was purchased used, so we were able to keep the school's costs really, really low. Uh, and but. Then, now that we're back, a lot of those computers are being used here. If you take a look here in this computer lab, all of this hardware here is donated hardware. 
Um, so we're using all free and open source software on donated computers. The only thing that, that we have tied up money-wise in this room for, uh, for the lab are some batteries. Uh, so we have 32 computers, um, all even using for standardized testing this week for a few hundred dollars. So yeah, that's some of what we do. And uh, if I can ask another question, how, how many of you have actually uh, tried tried programming and started writing writing software in one form or another? Yeah, raise and your four. hands. Let's let's see. Have a look. look at that. That's Bigger number than I was anticipating. That's wonderful. Hey, that's great. And um, which is your favorite kind of programming environment? Programming language or tool? Okay, which which programming language or tools are you guys using? If you're pro JavaScript. Okay. Okay, well, fair enough. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Has anybody here done, uh, well, I know a number of you did at least experimented with HTML because we had a lesson on that last spring. Were, were you there that day when we experimented with HTML? A few of you? Okay. Uh, has anybody done Python? Okay, see a few hands. Great, great. Okay, so there's a few things they've done. All right, I'll throw one last one out. Scratch. Has anybody done Scratch? Yes. Okay. I even I've done. That. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That's super. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Shuttleworth. It was a pleasure. Lovely to meet you guys. All right, Stu. Thank you so and much for asking the questions. And thank you. And we realize it is super early. These kids came in before class. We were so wow. happy to have you. Thank you. Lovely to meet you guys. Have a great day. Okay. You guys have a great day as well. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye, kids. <laughs>